thanking you for this opportunity to uh, give you praise and glory. I feel such a strong support from your Holy Spirit that will cause me to say something that will bring life change today. I'm depending on you. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning on you. I need you, God. and We need you. These people are here to hear something from you. And I declare, Father, that all of the harvest is secure, that those that need a life-giving relationship or to renew a life-giving relationship with Jesus will be free to do so given the opportunity. And those that you've sent to join a life-giving church will be free to call this place home today in the name of Jesus. Satan, listen to me closely. You are defeated. Listen to me closely. We win. Listen to me closely. You can't have our families, our joy, our peace. Listen to me closely. We're stronger than we've ever been. Listen to me closely. We have faith and you can't stop our faith. We are victorious in Jesus' name. All the God's people say amen. Come on with your Bible in your hand and great passion and enthusiasm. Let's make our faith confession for the word. Say the applied word of God. Come on, I need more of you to say it. Say the applied word of God. God. Will change my life instantly. I'm both a hearer and a doer of the word. I live to please God. Therefore, I walk by faith and not by sight. I will possess my promises. I will pursue with passion. I will prosper as my soul prospers. My faith is my evidence in Jesus name will you say amen look at the person beside you and give them a big old smile show them your 32's your 22's your 5's your 4's your 3's your 2's if you're sitting next to one a person with one tooth raise your hand we have a gift for you today (laughs) seen a few hands go (laughs) say successful relationships now last week We talk to the singles this week. We're going to talk to our married couples. But if you will listen, I believe you can get something out of it no matter if you're married or single. Or even if you desire to be married or single. I had a parent come to me last week. And I I mean, it was a very um, uh, vivid conversation we had last week about she's so thirsty. But... I had a parent come to me and said, you know, I know you're talking to adults, but my teenager needed this message. I had, I, had, I had men come in to me and say, Pastor, I understand the context of what you were talking, but I really needed that message. And so just because I'm talking to married people and those of you that are online, you know, we always want to involve you and get you sharing with your friends and inviting people. I really need you to hear me because... My, my, my preacher wants to go off into this place of encouragement, but I got to stay focused on relationships because of the subject matter. Are y'all with me? So today is nothing left to give, nothing left to give, nothing left to give. If you're married more than 24 hours, there will be a point where you feel like you have nothing left to give. Now, if you go to Vegas on Saturday and, and don't know what really went down and you get married and wake up Sunday and like we made a mistake and go undo it, then you cool, but if you stay married more than 24 hours, you will feel at some point in time you have what? Nothing left to give. One of my favorite things to do right now, one of my most favorite things to do right now is one of the most painful things that I've ever done, and that is boot camp. I love to go to boot camp. I love to go, and and, and it's crazy because as you're getting dressed, you're asking yourself, why are you doing this? And, and, and it's not like anything that I've ever done because you think when you go to boot camp, you'll be used to it after a couple weeks. But they switch it up every single day and it just makes your body say things that are not in the Holy Ghost it, because they just keep switching it up and you never get used to it. But check this out. You like it and it hurts. Your lungs are burning, your legs are shaking, your arms are weak, you're faint, you're lightheaded, and you're like, I can't wait until tomorrow to go back to boot camp. So, 
is 30 minutes of intense pressure, nonstop. There are no drink breaks. There are no restroom breaks. It's go, go, go. Rotate to the next station. Go, go, go. Rotate to the next station. So who would want to put themselves through that? Well, I had a bright idea one day. I went to boot camp at 9.30 in the morning, and then I turned around. I wanted some more. I went back to boot camp at 4.30. As I'm getting dressed, Lady C is looking at me saying, boy, you're going to learn. And I'm putting my shoes on saying, why am I doing this? Like, what's wrong with me? So I get to boot camp and I'm going through it and everything is cool and I'm getting to the last station. And then I get to the last station. Y'all got to listen to me now. My mind tells me, stop, quit. Don't do it anymore. It's over. Just stand there. But anytime you stand there, somebody's running over to you tomorrow. You need to come on and pick it up. What's wrong with you? And I'm like, look, now. Now, it's a nicer way to say what you're trying to say to me. Be hollering and screaming at me. I do got a little rap trash man down on the inside of me. I am sensitive. Say last station. last station. My mind tells me I have nothing left to get. Y'all better follow me. And so we were doing squat kicks. We had to squat and kick high and squat and kick high for three minutes straight. Three minutes straight. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. But then I'm good and my mind is like quit. But I look across and I see this little girl. Well, I'll say a petite woman. She was little, and she was just going, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah? Oh, no, I ain't. You ain't finna outdo me now, hey? It ain't like you know who I am. And she locked eyes with me. I was like, oh, okay, then. I see what's up. I see where we going with this. And I was just kicking up. And I was, I was just getting it. But my mind, look, now, 30 seconds ago told me I had nothing left. I wasn't going to let that good little girl outdo me, man. And all of a sudden, it was a song that kicked on, and I locked into the rhythm of the song, and I was just gone. And in the last 30, they were like, 30 seconds, give it all you got. I was like, eat my dust. What's my point? What's my point? What's my point? I felt like I had nothing left to give. But here's what I learned. Here's what I learned. Philippians 4 and 3, 4 and 13 says something. I want you to read this and I want you to hold on to this. I want you to hold on to this. Everybody, let's read that. Ready, read. Okay, now that we know what it is, let's read it with some conviction. Ready, read. Now, I'm talking about marriage, but I need you to grab this for wherever you are. You can do all things that does what? Okay, let me help you, let me help you, let me help you. I don't want to deviate too much. But everything is possible if you do it through Christ. A lot of people feel like all you have to do is be in Christ. But you have to take everything that you do and filter it through Christ. He's our mediator. He's our chief intercessor. We have to push everything through him, our praise goes to him, but through him. Our praise goes to God through Jesus. Our, 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 our success in school. You might be in school right now, feel like you just cannot do it. You can do all things through Christ. You may be sitting here saying, Pastor, man, I've been waiting on this message because my marriage, I just feel like I have nothing left to give. You can do all things through through Christ that strengthens you. But here's what I learned. Here's what I learned. When you think you have nothing left to give, you have more. If you keep going, the person watching you will follow your pattern. Because after it was over with, the little petite girl, she came over and gave me a high five. She said, thank you so much. I said, for what? <laughs> she said, I felt like I was about to drop, but I saw you going. And in my mind, I was like, girl, I finna quit, but I seen you going. 
she let me know, follow me, she kept going because she saw me going and I kept going because I saw husband and wife, your mate will keep going if you don't give up and run out of breath. Just keep being nice. Just keep loving. I ain't loving him no more. I ain't doing it. You better keep going. Every person, listen to me, needs someone to support them when give up is all over them. Okay, 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 okay. Because she had a blue shirt on, right? She had a blue shirt on. She was grooving so good. I was going to say, I see you blue. <laughs> she said, I see you too, man. And both of us were at the point of give up. But when you're at the point of give up, if you can just get somebody along the way, listen, that will encourage you but not baby you. Here's what I believe. If you talk to, talk to three people about the same thing, you want pity. You don't want improvement. Guess what happened? Then you're on Facebook. Guess what happened? Then your mama call. Mama, guess what happened? Then you got to call your prayer partner. We need to pray. What's wrong? Guess what happened? You don't want to change. You want pity. Every marriage, here's what I learned, here's what I learned. Every marriage needs to define, hold on here, their tempo and rhythm. Oh, hold on. Every marriage needs to define, say, their tempo and their rhythm. I call this running your own race. My wife and I learned this early on. Run our own race. Run your own race. They got a new car. Praise God. We run in our race. They got a new dog. Praise God. We run in our own race. I remember, see, the thing after church was where you was going to eat. Where y'all going to eat? Huh. And the only reason you're asking me where we going so you can tell me where you going. We going to Mary Max. Well, Miss Mary Max, I mean... We're going home. No, but see, when you're comfortable running your own race, you can celebrate if somebody else is driving in the fast lane and you over because this is our race. This is, this is our pace right now. We're going to be over there in a minute, but right now, this is where we are. We're going home to get that, baked, that leftover baked chicken. We're going to get that, and she's going to cook up. She's going to put probably some more corn because that was the cheapest thing on sale at Cub Foods last week, 3 $4. So that's probably what it's going to be, but we're running our race. We went on vacation. We did, too. It was just to her daddy's house because we didn't have no money for no hotel room. <laughs> Say rhythm, rhythm and tempo. You got to figure out what's your rhythm. You got to figure out what's your tempo. We got an R&B, hip-hop marriage. Now, I like jazz, but that's not for my marriage. That's too slow. I know some country songs, but I don't want that for my marriage. Now, you got to figure out what's your tempo. What's your rhythm? One of y'all on country, one of y'all on heavy metal. I'm making real sense with something so simple. One of y'all want to travel the world. One of y'all want to sit in the basement. One of y'all like, if we can just get this three-bedroom, two-bath paid off, we got 12 more payments. And the other one's like, I got my mind on a 57-room, 900-bathroom. And y'all just not, your tempo is off. One of y'all want to keep the paid off dots and the other one want a rocket ship. I, I, I've been looking at that new rocket ship. I think we, we need to. And so your rhythm is off. Your communication rhythm. Your time rhythm. Your rhythm off. And y'all sitting there arguing what's, but what's supposed to be a great time of joy and fellowship and communion with the Holy Spirit. You want one, he want eight. Try, y'all. 
your money rhythm off. One of y'all want to save. One of y'all trying to spend every dime you got. Your integrity rhythm is off. One is saying, let's pay these people. One is like, look, somebody got to wait. <laughs> and, and I've been working the past eight weeks. And I need me a vacation. Now, what is we going to do? Well, I take that back. What is you going to do? Because I'm going. I'm hanging out here much too long, y'all, but I need y'all to get this to understand something. We had to define our rhythm. People going on cruises and stuff. I told y'all, I, I get you a boat to put in the tub. We ain't got no money for that. That ain't our rhythm. And when we understood the wrong rhythm or tempo came in our home, no, nah, this, this kind of heavy metal, baby, we loud, we loud, we loud, we loud, we loud. That's not our rhythm. Let's get back to the R&B. Let's get back to Silk. Let's get back to 112. Let's get back to Jodeci. Let's get back to Black Street. Y'all, ah! No, see, when Axel Rose, no, we don't, we don't communicate like that. We got to get back. Some of y'all looking at me like, you said gospel. I don't want no Shirley C's in my house. I don't want no green bean for that. I don't want that. When it comes my time, I don't want no, I'm climbing up <laughs> on the rough side <laughs> of the mountain. I don't want that. 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 Y'all want to know what I want, but I ain't going to tell you what I want. Y'all like, well, what you say, sir? Go on and say just a little bit. I shall not be moved. Y'all follow me. Y'all follow me. Y'all follow me. This making sense, y'all? When your rhythm is off, the peace is disturbed. Romans 12 and 18, New Revelation, I want you to check this out on this scripture. It says, if it be possible, as much as lieth in who? What are you supposed to do? Live peaceably with who? With who? When your rhythm is off, your peace is disturbed, and the possibility of living peaceable with you has become an impossibility. So now I have more peace at work, I'm going to talk in here, than I do at home. I have more time. I like talking to people on the phone better than I'm talking. I'll walk past you. <laughs> yeah, dog, what up, man, man? I tell you, boy, man, that thing was on. Okay, I'm going to holler at you. <laughs> no. Your rhythm is off and it messes up your peace. Now the Bible says if it be possible, and we know it's possible, as much as lieth in me. But the challenge is in most couples, we're not looking at what's lying on the inside of us. We're looking at what's lying on the outside of them. So when, uh, I'm, I'm going somewhere, when peace is disturbed, when peace is disturbed, evil becomes the force, the fuel, and the focus. I don't want, so if I don't have peace, that means I got chaos. So I, 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 so I don't have peace, now I got evil thoughts. And that's my focus, I'm thinking evil. Now I got evil words. I'm saying stuff, that's my fuel. I got evil deeds, I'm doing stuff. When I was being nice and... and Getting your towel out now, I, I, I ball it up and put it in the back where you can't reach it. I, 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 I was fixing your food when, when everything was good. Now I don't fix your food and tell you I'm doing you a favor, not fixing. <laughs> Some of y'all missed that one. You don't want me to fix your plate this week, baby. Because we're going to have to ask pastors, is the church available? This Saturday. <laughs> evil focus. Evil thoughts. Evil words. Evil deeds. And this is the one that I hate the most. An evil atmosphere. Your home is a place of joy. Now the atmosphere is evil. 
Romans 12 and 21 says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with Y'all ain't got to say amen to this, but ain't it just hard to do good when you're mad? You mad, you all in your feelings, you all fleshed out, and you know you're supposed to do good, and you're like, I ain't finna do no good. Why? I'm mad. Why? He wrong, she wrong. Are we going to do it the Bible way or your way? What, 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 what is we going to do? Yeah, what is we going to do? What, like, like, for real, what is we going to do here? Are we going to do it the way that feels good to you? Because most of the time in a marriage, what feels good to you ain't good for the marriage. Say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Now, you got to do this thing through Christ. So run your attitude through Christ. You telling yourself you can't graduate is too hard? Run your negativity through Christ. Fear jumping on you, telling you you can't get out of debt? Run that fear and through Christ. Amen. Say, I can do all things. But there's no peace, it's chaos. There's fear, there's stress, there's worry. You overcome evil with good. I want to uh, look at a passage of scripture as we finish up today. Uh, Jesus now comes on the scene and there's this wedding and something interesting happens in John 1, uh, John 2, 1 through 11. It says, in the third day there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there and Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Jesus was not being disrespectful. I want y'all to say, you know, because I know if I talk to my mom that way, y'all be drinking some Czech sodas. Uh, over Because that wasn't a woman. I, no, that, that wouldn't work. But he wasn't being disrespectful. His mother said unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Don't you see how his mama ignored him? I don't care what you said. I told you, you're going to do what I said. Uh, and there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two, the three first skins apiece. Jesus said unto them, listen to this, fill the water pots with what? What do you put in water pots? I mean, he said, fill the water pots with Okay. I want to pause here. You have to fill your marriage with marital things. What's me time? Fill the water pots with water, and they were filled them up to the brim. Number eight, he said unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. That's important, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast, he tasted it, he said, man, this was good. You saved the best for us. And uh, go down to verse number 11. And the beginning of Jesus' miracles did uh, in Canaan of Galilee manifested for his glory, and the disciples believed on him. Let me give you a first few things that we're going to do, and, and then we'll be finished here. The first miracle, listen to this, was performed in a marriage. Don't mess up the miracle with mismanagement of your marriage. First miracle. First miracle Jesus performed was at a wedding, in a marriage. Wine in here represents joy. Say wine represents joy. I've been told enough glasses of wine, you'll have joy. Okay. But wine is symbolic of joy. I've been told now, I've been told. At some point, listen to me closely as we finish, the flow of your marriage uh, will be challenged, depleted, or tested. The joy in your marriage, it will be challenged, depleted, and it will be tested. Here's a solution. Connect with the people, listen to me, who have your solution 
and distance yourselves from people that contribute to your problem. Jesus connected with the disciples because they had help for the solution to the deficit of joy. Most of the time when you're in a deficit of joy and you feel like you have nothing else to give, you won't readily connect with people that's going to tell you what the solution is. You want to connect with people that will pacify you and be on your side. Just like last week, just like last week I was talking to my singles. You don't want to talk to people that tell you that dude is a bum. But, 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 but it's been like three years and he the only one that has just been kind to me. And, 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 and he took me out to Red Lobster the other night and everything. And it's, it's like, but he's a bum. And you know what you'll do? You'll stop talking to them and you go over to the other little bum girlfriend that's got a little bum boyfriend and y'all talk bum talk. Connect with people that has your solution. When your marriage is challenged, you don't need to be talking to another challenged marriage. Man, me and my wife doing rough right now. Oh, you think y'all rough, dog? Man, shoot. Man, hey, man, hey. I don't even know if I'm going back home today. You know what? I ain't going to. Yeah, man, let's go get us a room, man. We ain't going back for that. That is not what you, come on, y'all. Misery loves, I don't want to be miserable by myself. I need somebody else to be miserable with me, and I'm looking for miserable people so we can just be miserable. We can multiply the misery. Are we going to fix the problem? No, we're just miserable right now. I'm mad. And I want everybody to know why I'm mad, because I'm technically right, but I'm solutionally wrong, but I'm te technically right. They had, to, it's, I, I, they had to look to Jesus to restore the joy. Y'all missed that one. There was no wine. Wine represents joy. They went to Jesus to restore the joy. I'm going to say that one more time. There was no wine. Wine represents joy. They looked to Jesus to restore the joy. You need to stop looking at their issues and their deficits and focus your attention on Jesus and let him restore the joy. Can I help y'all? That y'all messed up. Do y'all need this today or do I need to preach something else? Number two, number two, number two, number two. Do what you're told to do. When you're in the challenge, somebody's going to tell you what to do. Don't allow the timing and the circumstances to cause you to miss your turnaround moment. Jesus' mother told him, go fix this. He, my time has not yet come. Listen, disciples, uh, do what he tell y'all to do. Like, you cannot allow the timing of what's going on to cause you to miss your miracle moment. What are you saying? What are you saying? The marriage, check this out, the marriage just started. It wasn't time to run out of joy. Running out of joy, listen, isn't always based on tough times. Can I encourage you? Let me give you some factors why you run out of joy based on this scenario here. Number one, miscalculated, miscalculated, miscalculated. You factored some things a certain way but didn't go the way that you thought that they were going to go. So that messes up your joy. Number two, misinformed. You thought marriage was going to be easy. You didn't know it took this much work. One of the things that Lady C has been helping out women, when you get around that uh, five to seven year, maybe a little bit early, but five to seven years, you, you have this epiphany like, this it? Like, work, cleaning up after everybody, cooking, putting him to bed after I put them to bed. This it? Like, there is. <laughs> Yay. No, helping them understand 
the, 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 the nuances of marriage, but embracing the value of it. And, and, and I'm helping to get men to understand, well, man, you know, I just want to do my thing. Look, right, look, listen, man, look. You should have did your thing before you married this woman. You know. See, ladies, she trapped me. That's my story. No, that's a good trap. I'm glad she said the trap. No, but you got a wife and chilling and little hungry, bad chilling. And you just want to just work and take your check. Am I going too far? And just do what you want. No, no, it ain't no time for that. You was married now. Man up, man up, man up. Work the plan and we can chill out later. But right now, it's time to, if you know your rhythm, you're looking at somebody else been married 15 years. Both of them been employed the whole time. You just got married eight months and just got a job three weeks ago and you won't live like them. That don't work like that. Hey, hey, I'm finna really mess up. And they are givers and you are God robber. It don't work like that. 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 No, 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 no. It don't work like that. No, you got to understand, run your race. We can't do that right now, but this is what we can do. See, I'm, I'm going to blow some of y'all mind. I'm going to blow some of y'all mind. Do y'all know when we took our first real vacation that had nothing to do with family? We was married 10 years. And y'all be like, y'all pastor just be balling for ladies. See, that girl, look, that just started happening. Every time I look up, Pastor taking us somewhere that just start happening. <laughs> no, because you got to understand, we had our rhythm. We wanted stuff paid off. And other people, they traveling, send us a postcard, boo. And they coming back, girl, we had, but what y'all do? Hmm? We ate shrimp. Hmm? You did. We got shrimp right here at Kroger. What else y'all do? We was out in the sun. The sun was out here. It didn't rain in Georgia either. What else y'all do? We was in the sand, and it was white. Well, ours was brown, but we was at Lake Lanier. What else y'all do? How much it cost y'all? $5,000 ain't got good. Cost us $79.95 to go up there and rent a cabana. And we put the other $3,000 on our credit card. Ain't the Lord good? Run your race. Run your race. Run your race. Everybody jumping in relationships. You just don't jump. You just keep working on you, boo. Run your race. Because you know when you're ready for something and when you're not. And if God gave you your dream man or dream woman, would you be able to maintain a quality relationship right now? Run your race. Run your race. I love, run my race. Run your race. I, I love living in a neighborhood. I love watching the competition of neighbors. I love it. I, and and, and I, I commentate it. Y'all ever watch sports? And they be like, he's on the 30, he's on the 12, he's on a touchdown. I'm, I do that to my wife. I'm like, they just put a fence up. Watch the neighbor's house to the back corner adjacent lot. A fence is coming within three weeks. She be like, oh my God. Look, they just got a new patio set. Watch the Johnsons across the street or watch the, the Williams across the street. I, I commentate that thing. People get so caught up in what they doing and I got to do what you doing. You don't know what them people going through over there. Run your race. But what's your rhythm? And what's your tempo? Many of you need to get the tempo out of your house that you really don't like. And then let me help you now. 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 Let me help you. If you can really, really dance and they can't, you're going to have to change your favorite music to something that's mutually beneficial for the relationship. Uh, y'all miss me. I'm talking about dancing, but y'all missing me. What I'm saying is you may be well defined in an area. You might have to switch that thing up for the success of the relationship because you're in a race together. You can't run together if you're running off leaving them. 
this is too much today. I think this is too much for a Sunday morning. This is more so like a workshop or something. I'm, I'm trying to show y'all. Okay, so let's look at this. Miscalculated, misinformed, mismanagement. I can't stay here long. M mismanagement of the joys, the inconsistency factor, the discipline to remain consistent and contain the self-centered focus. You mismanage the joy that's created together when you seek selfish pleasure. Okay, the joy. Say the joy. You don't create joy by yourself. You create joy together as a couple. Because if you created it by yourself, then you don't... No, no, no. We create joy. I mismanage the joy when I lose the discipline to stay consistent. What does that mean? What I did in year one, I do in year 15. What I did in year three, I do in year four. What I did in year seven, I do in year ten. Consistent. Are y'all with me? But then I have to re 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 refuse the, 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 the focus of containing myself. In the time of inconsistencies, I can track it back to self-centeredness. Whenever the joy is messed up, it's because I want it my way versus the success of the relationship. Another reason they ran out of joy, unexpected things. Too many people showed up. Y'all know everybody that show up don't RSVP. Everybody that show up in your marriage don't RSVP. Wait and get married. You'll have people you ain't seen since high school. Find you. With Sally Mae, they find you. It's like Sally Mae gave them your number because you know she's going to find you first. I believe she worked for the feds. When I got that girl off my back, I'm serious, man. I was like, listen, this is just too much. I got one woman and Sally, you keep coming to my relationship. I got to get you out of here. Sally Mae, that's a credit student loan. Y'all like, he had a mistress? <laughs> Sally Mae, credit card, school, education. Misplaced Pell Grant money. <laughs> How many of y'all lived off y'all Pell Grant? Come on, talk to me. You were supposed to go get some books. You went and got some shoes. You, I, come on, somebody. <laughs> you sitting there watching your Pell Grant money. The winner by. Let me finish. Y'all playing too much in church. I got to finish. Here's another reason the joy ran out. Greedy people. You have some people that consume more than you expected them to consume at this wedding. I, I, I thought that if we, you know, we had 500 people show up at the wedding and everybody get two cups, that's a thousand. You know, that's you know, so many bottles. But I didn't know you was going to drink five bottles by yourself. No, I'm, that's, that's the wedding. But I'm talking about in your relationship. You have greedy people that dominate too much of the time in your marriage. I'm ministering here that you're supposed to be directing to somebody else. No, no, my, my, my focus is my wife and my children. I'm married. I'm not playing marriage. I'm married. And I love y'all. Say, Pastor, love us. But y'all must be think y'all crazy, think I'm finna take all my time for y'all and neglect my family. You crazy. I'm gonna be at everything my daughter do. Y'all go to y'all stuff, I'm going to mine. Sure am. Because I watched a generation of preachers give their life to the church. They don't know their wife. They don't know their kids. They have no relationship with them. And their father was in the home, but the children grew up fatherless. Not me. But since I love y'all, y'all know I'm going to give y'all my best. I give y'all my best. Now I give, I give y'all my best. They was like, you just told me I was crazy. That ain't your best. <laughs> Say, do my part. Jesus says, play me out, man. Do your part. You got to do your part. A lot of you want joy, and this is relationally, or just in life. 
but you have to do your part. They told me, say, hey, go get six water pots. Six represents the number of man. A lot of us are sitting back waiting on God to do everything, but God is not going to do everything until you do your part first. No, no, no. And, and, and this is, you want to get out of debt? Listen, it took you 10 years to get in it. One hallelujah and turn around and high five your neighbor three times is not going to get you out of debt. Do your part. Pull a credit report. Restructure your finances on your car. Do something, you know, minimize your credit. Minimize your spending. Do something. Turn your cable off. Take that money. Put it on your lowest bill. Do, but you got to do your part. Now, y'all sitting up in the house won't even talk to each other and think God just supposed to just make both of y'all magically become nice? No. Do your part. Say, do your part. Here's the one that I really want to get to, and I'm done. I got two more, but this is what I want to get you. Let the Holy Spirit fill the void. What did they say fill the water pots with? Holy Spirit is symbolic of water. Water is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Fire, wind, water. Throughout the Bible, the symbolism of Holy Spirit. But he says, look, what you have to do is be empty of yourself and get through, Je do this through Jesus and be filled with water. And what will happen is, ooh, thank you for revelation on the spot, God. As you're filled with water that's symbolic of the Holy Spirit, Jesus will now turn that into joy. Because they put water in, but it turned into wine, which is symbolic of joy. You got to do your part. I want you to stand. I want you to stand. I want you to stand. That's enough for today. I want you to stand. Y'all get anything out of it today? Okay, very quick, very quick. I could just pray us out and dismiss, but that's not what I want to do. I want to really, really make sure that if you came with a joy deficit, that you leave replenished. Now, this is just not for married couples, but a couple may come, couple may not come. The man may come. He may feel like he doesn't have joy, but you don't even have to be married. You just don't have joy in life like I'm just not happy. There was a point in time I was single. I was just not happy. I didn't see the joy out of life. Y'all got to know by now, man, the way I live my life, I have so much joy. Look at me. Look at me. Even when finances are challenged sometimes, I still have joy. No. Oh, I had to graduate from allowing my emotions being dictated by my decimal point. If you need joy and you want joy, this is what the Lord is saying. Get out of your seat, coming to this place, on this altar, and ask God as you're coming, God, give me joy, give me joy, give me joy. Come on, 